As you've seen in other micro nuggets that I've shared with you on the adaptive security appliance, the ASA can indeed function like a layer three router on your network. That's right, it can speak routing protocols and it can route packets from one segment to another in your network as it does intense inspection and filtering of traffic for you. Well, sure enough, it doesn't have to be a dynamic routing entity on your network. We can train the adaptive security appliance for how it should move packets. And this, of course, is done with static routes. In this micro nugget, let's make sure we can easily create and utilize static routes on the ASA. So once again, this is a perfect time for me to leverage GNS3 in order for us to master ASA topics. Here you can see our topology. We're only going to use a portion of it. I have the ASA a device on the outside named R2, a device on the inside named R1. Now, what I did prior to this micro nugget, just so I didn't bore you, was uh, here we have the 10, 10, 10 network. And out here we have the 192, 168, 1 network. What I did was I created a 10, 20, 20 network. I did this utilizing a loopback interface. So we have an additional network in here. Notice it's not directly connected to the ASA. Out on R2, I created an additional network. It's 192.168.2.0. So we've got some additional networks out there in the infrastructure. Not a lot of them, so this would be a great example of when we would use static routes. In fact, what I'd like to do is very typical. On the ASA, I'd like to create a default route pointing out to this router. So anything that the ASA needs to reach that's not directly connected, it needs to go that way with it. And then we'll go ahead and create a non-default route, a static route entry for this specific subnet on the adaptive security appliance will then test connectivity to these remote networks. Let's get started. And here we are on the ASA to get started. And before we do anything, we may want to do some quick confirmations here. How about a show interface IP brief? Show interface IP brief. Okay, looks like we've got our outside interface with 192.168.1.100 and our inside interface with 10.10. 10, 100. By the way, another great verification command I don't think I've done in any of these micro nuggets yet is show name if. This will help us too, making sure we are dealing with the outside and the inside interfaces and their respective security levels. Something else that is entirely appropriate before we go any further is to ping the device on the outside. That'll be our default gateway. Great. And how about pinging the device on the inside of our network? And we can see that connectivity works as well. Great. Well, we actually lost a packet there. I think GNS3 was kind of waking itself up at that point. Not to worry. Sometimes with the emulator, you can see little hiccups like that. But I think we're good for our testing purposes here. All right. Time to drop those routes in. Remember what we want to do? A default route pointing to the outside router. We don't have to say IP when we go to create this route. IP is assumed. It's the only protocol that this device deals with. So I'm going to say route, and then we're going to give the outside interface name. Yeah, we associate this static route with the outside interface, and we say, yeah, the default syntax, all zeros for the IP address, all zeros for the subnet mask, and then we can issue the next hop address, which is that router out there. Look at that. Another way to do this, by the way, save yourself some typing. I think this works. You could say zero, zero. Let's try it. If it accepts it, obviously that syntax is correct. That's great. Could we do a show route and see this static route in the routing table? We sure could. In fact, it is the default static route. Therefore, it has this asterisk next to it as the candidate default. Very nice. Let's create another route, shall we? Route, and this one is on the inside interface, and it's to specifically that 10, 20, 20 that I told you I created. 
and the mask on that is going to be 24 bit. And the next top there is our 10, 10, 10 dot one device. So there we go. We can confirm this with our show route. We can see two static routes in our routing table now on the adaptive security appliance. Now, you might be tempted to test this right now by, let's say, pinging uh, that remote subnet on the outside world, 192.168.2.2 is the address that I have on the remote subnet in the outside world, and look at that, it works beautifully. The information, the pack, ping packets are sent to the default gateway at 192.168.11. The default gateway is connected to the 192.168.2 network. The default gateway sends the packets back to us. How about the, the subnet that's on the inside, which would be 10.20.20? And I gave it an address, by the way, of 10.20.20.1. So if we go to ping that location, we see we meet with success. What happened here? Well, the lookup was done in the routing table, and it was deemed that we need to send this out the inside interface, traffic for 10.20.20.1, that was sent to 10.10.10.1, which is connected to 10.20.20, and that device was able to return the traffic. Please note, the devices are directly connected to this adaptive security appliance. Therefore, they knew how to get back to this security appliance. So we didn't need to do any static routing or any routing protocol of any kind, in this case, on the R1 and R2 devices. In fact, let me show you the topology just to remind you of this. So we didn't need to do any routing configuration on R2 and R1 in this case because they were directly connected to the adaptive security appliance. Well, great stuff, and obviously the point of this demonstration is indeed these static routes. Let me do show run include route, and we can see the static routes that we created in this micro nugget. One for the outside, a default static, one for the inside pointing to a specific subnet. Now you have mastered static routing on the ASA in this micro nugget. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.